A4C Divers! Welcome to Facebook Live! Thank you for tuning in. We have an exciting presentation tonight. Uh, we've got Betty. Say hi to Betty, everybody. And she is with the Turtle Hospital down in Marathon, Florida. And we are going to let her give us some live sea turtles. Woohoo! So, guys, before we start, you guys know what to do. You need to tell us where you're listening in from. We want to know, are you listening in from here in Florida, outside of Florida, outside the United States? We want to know. And also give us those thumbs up, those heart emojis, or those smiley faces to let us know you're enjoying tonight's presentation. All right. And you guys know how this works. Uh, you want to go to the event tab on our website, www.force-e.com, and register for tonight's event because we'll be raffling off one of the SSI Sea Turtle Ecology Digital Kits. So you can achieve, by taking this course, um, the digital online, you can achieve the certification with an instructor. So if you want to learn more about sea turtles, uh, go ahead and make sure you're in the raffle. The raffle cuts off at 645. And I will share that link in case you didn't register. All right, guys. So we want to make sure we don't lose daylight. So I'm going to turn it over and we're going to have our guest presenter tell us a little bit about herself. And then she's going to show you the facility that's behind you. All right, Betty, it's all you. Hi, Nicole. Uh, hello, Facebook audience. And welcome to the world renowned Turtle Hospital. I am going to turn the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at, which is pretty amazing. Let's make sure I can get the camera around. All right, we're looking at our Turtle Hospital ambulances. And I am Betty Zirkelback. I am the manager of the Turtle Hospital. We have an incredible team here at the Turtle Hospital. Our mission is to rescue, rehabilitate, and return endangered and threatened sea turtles to the wild. I'm gonna start this by looking at our Turtle Hospital ambulance. You can see that cool turtle tag. Those tags do make a difference for us. We get grants that help us buy very important equipment. It actually helped us to purchase one of these ambulances. And I just wanna show you a peek inside. How cool is that? <laughs> I don't know if any of you have ever been in an ambulance, but probably not a sea turtle ambulance. And some of the equipment that we use is a kayak, a big net, as you can imagine. And then we have some crash kits, just like you would in a human ambulance. So this is where the sea turtles are first picked up. You might be wondering how, where did the turtles come from? We do not have boats out in the water looking for sea turtles. We depend on the general public. So there are eyes on the water. I'm going to bring you in behind the scenes. And if you were a sick sea turtle, this is how you would enter the turtle hospital. Um, this is behind the scenes. This is where the sea turtles get their first bath, a fresh water bath to get them clean, but they'll come into our emergency room. And people are surprised to see a lot of the same equipment that you have in a human emergency room. We are a fully licensed veterinary hospital. We have an incredible medical staff. We have top sea turtle veterinarians. We have a digital x-ray a scale, and this is where animals are stabilized. We man a 24-hour stranding hotline that covers over 200 miles of coastline in the Florida Keys. This is our blood processing equipment. So anytime a day or night when a sea turtle comes in, we're able to collect blood with our medical staff that pings to our veterinarians, and we can right away start treatments of fluids and medications. Here is a sea turtle x-ray. This is of a Kemp's Ridley, most critically endangered sea turtle in the world. And this is our surgery suite. Nicole, you wanna roll that surgery video? Yes, give me one second to bring it into the stream. Okay guys, let's go ahead and Okay, here we go, and here's the video. And what we're looking at here is Dr. Brooks. 
the multi pigment in here, but this is a juvenile green sea turtle who's having surgery to remove those fiber papilloma tumors. We see a lot of juvenile green sea turtles come in in our area with these horrific tumors. It's a disease called fiber papilloma ptosis, and it affects over 50% of the green sea turtle population in and around the Florida Keys. She's using a CO2 laser, which I'm going to show you right here. It's a very important piece of equipment. That's how we remove the tumors. We have a general anesthesia machine. So we do quite a bit of those surgeries here at the Turtle Hospital. Thank you, Nicole. Okay. This is the educational part of our Turtle Hospital. We are open to the public 365 days a year. We see over 100,000 visitors and all the programs start in this room. It's pretty old school. They see a PowerPoint presentation where we teach them all we can in 20 minutes about sea turtles before they actually go out and meet our patients. You'll see real turtle shells on the wall. And this is a schematics of all the turtles we're cur currently caring for here is 51 of them and where you're going to find them in the turtle hospital. So let's go meet some turtles. And Nicole, I don't know if you mentioned, we will field questions um, at the end of this. So, but if you have something pressing, um, Nicole can pass that along to me. So we're gonna go out of the hospital and meet some turtles. We're losing the daylight. We're located in the heart of the Florida Keys, mile marker 48.5 on the bay side. This used to be an old motel called Hidden Harbor Marine. I'm gonna first take you into what we call the research trailer. We don't have any turtles in here, but just give you an idea of our capacity. This is four tanks and a closed water treatment system. And this is where we quarantine animals that we can't have near the other animals. So it's really nice having this option. We can control the temperature of the water and the air. Sea turtles cannot regulate their body temperature. They are what we call ectothermic. So they take on the temperature of the water or air around them. They get in a lot of trouble if temperatures drop below 60 degrees. So they do get a type of hypothermia called cold stunning. Before we lose daylight, let's take a look at some turtles. Here is Bender. Bender is an adult Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. She's one of our permanent non-releasable sea turtles. She's missing a flipper and also has an injured shell from a boat strike that left her unable to dive. A sea turtle's food source is at the bottom of the ocean. So if they're unable to dive, they will starve to death. Now you're wondering why she's on the bottom. If you look very closely, you're gonna see some round things. And as divers, you're familiar with those lead weights. So we actually have weights that are adhered to Bender's shell. And that helps her to be more comfortable and go to the bottom where sea turtles like to be. She's gonna tuck in now. <laughs> so we cannot release a turtle with those weights on them because the outer layer of their shell is made of keratin like our fingernails and it will eventually shed and with it, those weights and it'll re-keratinize underneath. But unfortunately they are non-releasable. We have another 30,000 gallon tank here with a large logger head. I don't know if we're gonna get a glimpse of her. You can see she's swimming around. We can't see her, but I'm gonna move on because we have a lot of turtles in the back, but we have these two large pools that work out very nicely for large turtles. The reason we have the non-releasable turtle in here right now is because it is sea turtle mating season. And we know that because the boy turtles start chasing the lady turtles and that's why Bender was taken out of the main pool. And this is Medea. <laughs> she is an adult loggerhead sea turtle. She's absolutely gorgeous. So these bubble butts, as we call them, that are non-releasable, we have a lot of them here at the Turtle Hospital. They play a very important role. Not only do they help the visitors learn about sea turtles, but they're also the donors for blood transfusion. So they're otherwise healthy and our facility is unique 
and that we have these non-releasable turtles that have healthy blood that really help to save other turtles' lives. We have done three blood transfusions in the last week and a half, and I currently have six patients here in rehabilitation that have received whole blood transfusions. You're gonna start to see the old motel and we have very creative use of space here. All of these rooms have a purpose. We have a research lab and a water lab. So we have active research projects with universities. We're currently in projects with University of Florida, University of Georgia and UC Davis Veterinary College out in California. And we're gonna go for a ride back to the turtle enclosure. So our animal care staff works here full time and they also live on site. This is the staff that mans the 24 hour stranding hotline. And they live in these rooms that have been modified into apartments. If you visited the Keys decades ago, you might have stayed at this motel. And this is what was the honeymoon cottage and is now where our veterinarians stay. And we're going to see one of the perks to living and working here is this gorgeous view. It's not a bad place to call work. We have the sunset. And again, we're located right in the heart of the Florida Keys. It's beautiful diving, great temperature year round. And now we've arrived at what we call the turtle enclosure. So all of the tanks that we're looking at are our hospital tanks and we're gonna start to meet some patients. Put some lights on here. All right. So we're gonna start here and this is little Luna. Luna is a juvenile green sea turtle that has fibropapillomatosis, and you're going to hear me say that a lot. We call it FP for short. And she had a whole blood transfusion when she came in due to her low blood values. And Nicole, do you want to roll the footage of the underwater eating? So we could get a look at the turtle's underwater. Okay. One second. This is TJ Sharp, and again, we're losing light. I'm gonna try to get you from where you can see. <laughs> about two pounds and we can locate it last year at the turtle hospital. Very rare for us to get a leather back. This is the only one that we've rehabilitated here at the turtle hospital. I have done some disentanglements out at sea. And this little one was fully rehabilitated and returned to the ocean. Thank you, Nicole. So we have a lot of these little greens in the tanks and I'm going to move to the lower level where hopefully we're going to have more light. Actually, I think I can. Here we go. This is little gingerbread. Gingerbread is another juvenile green with fibropapillomatosis, had a whole blood transfusion and she's in shallow water because she's still very sick. Let's move to the next enclosure where I think I have more light. And we'll get some lettuce and be able to feed. So there's seven species of sea turtles in the world. We are lucky enough to see five of those species in and around the Florida Keys. Primarily what we get in at the Turtle Hospital are those juvenile greens with fibropapillomatosis. We also see a lot of sub-adult and adult loggerhead sea turtles. We see them with boat strikes, fishing gear entanglement intestinal impactions and one thing i can say and you've probably picked up on already most of what we see is human impact injuries we do get an occasional shark attack victim 
So here are more of our turtle tanks. We have a number of juvenile Kemp's Ridley sea turtles right now. They came in in December and they were transferred from New England. They were part of a cold stun event that happened in the Cape Cod area. We got 20 sea turtles in one night. It's another green. Let's see if we can take a look at some of the juvenile Kemp's Ridley. There's little Frozone. Frozone is a juvenile Kemp's Fiddly Sea Turtle. It's being treated for fungal pneumonia. Is receiving broad spectrum antibiotics and is also on nebulizer breathing treatment daily. And here's another one of the juvenile Kemp's Fiddly Sea Turtles. This is Flurry. Flurry is being treated for osteomyelitis or deep bone infection, which we do see is like a secondary infection we see from this cold stunning. And you'll see these turtles get similar things that a person with hypothermia might get. As you can see, we have a lot of tanks. And right now, not only are all the tanks full, but most of them have dividers in them. And this is one of the guest's favorites these are our little ones so we are about to go into nesting season in florida we have a number of turtles here that are what we call post hatchlings and i'm going to pick one up so hopefully you can get a better look this is cheese and cheese is a loggerhead sea turtle it's just absolutely beautiful Betty, can you hear me? Yes. Um, is cheese um, a hatchling from last season? And yes. And that's how big they got over yes. one year? Wow. Yep. yep. So you can see that is almost a year old. And we have mac and cheese, and they're part of a very special educational permit. So they will be at the turtle hospital till their shell or carapace is about 45 centimeters long. And they actually go to schools and local events with us. Um, Mac, we have Mac and Cheese. Mac went to the Wiling Mall yesterday for an outreach. And then we have, I, I wish we had more light <laughs> so you could see, but we have a post-hatchling, Kemp's Ridley. <laughs> can you see that? And you can see how the eyes are blue on the Kemp's Ridley. They're absolutely beautiful. And nature has been very good to these turtles. They're very dark as young ones because at this life stage, they would be found out in the Gulf Stream in the sargassum weed. And as they get older, they get very white. And that's because they move to sandy areas. And how many hatchlings can your facility support? Well, we, we've had hundreds at a time. Um, we don't see a lot of nesting in the Florida Keys because our islands are coral rocks. So we don't have those white sandy beaches that you're used to in the rest of Florida. But we do get about a hundred loggerhead nests and a handful of hawksbill nests per season. And here at the Turtle Hospital, we see 100 to 300 hatchlings a year. And do you have a survival rate on hatchlings when they're released into the wild? Do we even know? Well, we have a good success rate here in about 70% of the hatchlings we get in, we are able to return to sea. Um, this is a hawksbill post hatchling. And again, they're very rare and look at the coloring. It's just gorgeous. But only about one in a thousand hatchlings make it through their first year of life. So that's why the mama turtles have so many eggs in their nest. They have an average of about 120 eggs per nest. And we're going to keep moving around here. And only about one in 5,000 sea turtles make it to sexual maturity when they can reproduce. And that is about 20 or 25 years old for a sea turtle. And you, so you can see why they're in trouble. This is our main pool or tidal pool. It's 160,000 gallons. We have a lot of turtles in here, about 20. There's Coasty. That's 
favorite hangout. <laughs> and I get to dive in this pool to, to check on turtles and do inspections of the walls and the fences between the pens. A lot of the turtles that you're looking at are non-releasables. We have five permanent residents that the general public can adopt and help support. And then we also transfer turtles to aquariums all over the world. And that's the ones that are non-releasable. I'm going to throw a little lettuce in to see if they have any interest in snacking. Sea turtles are grazers. So they like to eat all throughout the day. They're also opportunistic feeders, so that gets them in trouble out in our oceans, as you can imagine, with all the trash out there. Do you have the video, Nicole, of the greens eating underwater? Sure. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Okay, here we go. One second. Here it goes. So a sea turtle doesn't have teeth. They have a beak more like a bird, and that is also made of keratin. The green sea turtles are the herbivores, and they have a serrated jaw that helps them to be able to cut through those greens. And in the wild, they would be eating natural seagrass or algae. The loggerheads are carnivores, and they eat other sea creatures. The hawksbills and Kemp's Ridleys, they're omnivores, so they eat a little bit of everything. You're going to find the hawksbills on the reef. They're going to be eating sponges. <laughs> so you can see that unique coloring. You see the patterns on the side of their face. Those scales are called scoots. And the scoop pattern on the back of the shell, that helps you to identify the species of sea turtle. But the scale pattern on the side of their head is unique to the turtle, similar to our fingerprints. So there are researchers, Nicole, that look at those patterns and are able to identify specific individual sea turtles. They've looked at over hundreds of sea turtles and not found any two of those patterns alike. So that's pretty interesting considering their pattern on their shell is the same within the species. So Nicole, I think we're losing light. <laughs> That's okay, and, I've, go ahead, you're back on. Okay, um, so if we wanna end, you know, with some release videos, and of course our goal with every turtle that comes into the turtle hospital is to rehabilitate it and return it to the wild. We see over 100 turtles a year. We get transfers from within the state of Florida and also outside, like I mentioned, from the New England area. We've had as many as 40 turtles come in in one night. We are nonprofit, and a lot of our operating costs comes from people that come to visit the turtle hospital. So it is a win-win. People that come through our doors and pay admission that admission fee is paying for the turtle care. We are also educating those people that are a lot of them visitors to our islands. They're the people that are out there diving and fishing and boating on our waters. And now we teach them what a sick sea turtle looks like. We help them to care about sea turtles and they are now our eyes on the water. So since we've increased our educational programs, six out of 10 of our rescue calls come from people that have been through our program. So that's pretty amazing. We also take donations, we have memberships, adoptions, and not only do we take care of sea turtles here, but we do research that helps sea turtles on a global level. So it's pretty amazing. It was all started by Richie Moretti, who is the founder and still the director of the Turtle Hospital. He is very involved, and I don't think he ever dreamed of it growing into what it was, so it's pretty amazing. And it was all by chance. He had this old motel that he bought when he retired as a multimillionaire and his, he was about 40 years old in the early 80s. And this tidal pool was the swimming pool for the motel. He and his partner, Tina Brown, were avid fisher men and they would bring fish back. It was before the fishing regulations and all those pictures you see of the 
six foot plus fish and they would bring the fish back for those pictures but then they would put them in this tidal pool and before long they had an aquarium of sorts and the school fell out found out about it and they asked if they could bring classes of children to come learn about local sea life well now it was about the mid 1980s when teenage mutant ninja turtles were all the craze and the classes of kids would ask to see a sea turtle well, at the time, sea turtles were already protected by the Endangered Species Act. Richie asked the state of Florida if he could have a turtle for his pool, and they said, well, you can have one if you help it. And that was the first permit for rehabilitation, and it has grown into the turtle hospital. So a pretty cool story, and if it wasn't for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we might not be here at the turtle hospital. What a great story. Um, people are wondering, can people volunteer at the turtle hospital? I wish I could say yes, but we currently do not have a volunteer program, and that is just because of liability in today's world. We have all paid staff, but we hope someday to have programs with internships and volunteers, so keep in touch, but we currently do not have volunteer program, although all our rescuers are volunteers. There are people out on the water that are sea a six sea turtle, and some people are even fishing, so... Sea turtles are protected. All species of sea turtles in and around the United States are protected by both state and federal laws. If you see a sick sea turtle, what do you do? You're legally not allowed to touch it. Well, you can call Fish and Wildlife. You can call a rescue facility like ours. And under our permit, we can guide you to pick that turtle up. Or we call Florida Fish and Wildlife or the U.S. Coast Guard. They're amazing partners. And we will physically get on a boat with a net and come help you bring the turtle in. And if you're out on the water and you don't have any of those phone numbers, you can always radio the Coast Guard on your boat radio, your VHF, and they will get you help as well. Awesome. Did you want me to play the video of the release? Yep. If you want to play the Lucy and Ethel video, which is a, just a fun video. Um, Lucy and Ethel were actually educational turtles, part of that special permit, and they grew to size, and we took them back out to sea to release them. <laughs> there they are. So there's our team releasing them. I took the sound down, so if you want to talk. Okay. So you can see they are little loggerheads. There's also a green there that was released at the same time. This is off one of our local snorkeling boats. We have an incredible island community here that works together for our sea life. And there she goes. Sea turtles are, are resilient and they're pretty amazing. You could not take a marine mammal like a dolphin or a manatee and keep it in captivity for two years and return it to the wild. It would not know where to go to eat or what to be afraid of. But sea turtles, they have everything they need to know imprinted. You can return a sea turtle to the wild and it's going to know where to go for food. The females are going to come back 20 years later when they reach sexual maturity and come back to the beach where they hatched off of to lay their nest. They have a type of internal GPS. It's just incredible. Now, we're looking at this turtle that's underwater and we see those metal tags. Do all of them get tagged when they get released back into the wild? Yes, that's a good question, Nicole. So we tag, put an identification tag on all turtles that are of size. So if they're, if they're real small, we do not put tags on them. But the ones that are 30 centimeters or larger, they get what we call those flipper tags and they have a number on them. That way if that turtle is ever found again, Florida Fish and Wildlife can go into a database and they'll have the whole story there. They also get a little pit tag similar to you would get in your pets. And we have a scanner, and Fish and Wildlife has a scanner. And if they, for some reason, would lose their flippers, we could still identify them. Um, we're looking at a turtle elevator <laughs> right now. I just wanted to show this, Nicole. Some of our turtles are very large. Our largest turtle right now is over 350 pounds. So this is how we get them out of the pool. We, this 
lift goes down into the water and we can bring the turtle up on the lift and then just slide it onto the back of the golf cart, which saves a lot of my team's backs. So that's a turtle elevator. Do you want to show the video of the Sheldon release? It's a release that we did just recently with a, an adult male loggerhead sea turtle. So we have a few turtles a year that go out with a satellite tag. And that uses the GPS system. And you can go online and actually track this turtle. This turtle was released from Pigeon Key right here in the heart of the Florida Keys on February 18th as part of a research study with Moat Marine. Okay, and we're I'm going to play the video. Okay. All right, let's get you your feel-good story of the night here. Meet Sheldon, the sea turtle. This is a big, beautiful guy here. I'm talking massive. 230-pound loggerhead was released back into the wild today. This was down in the Keys. Sheldon was rehabilitated at the Turtle Hospital after being found tangled up in a crab trap line. Oh, he looks excited again. Oh, yeah, he's back home. Getting back in the Gotta ocean. Got to see all his friends. Hey, yeah, because it's mating season. He's got a job to do. To be able to take a reproductive male and rehabilitate him in less than two weeks time and return him to his ocean home, this is a high for all of us. This is why we do what we do. Well, yeah, we're getting Discovery Channel on you. Now, you might notice the antenna on Sheldon's back there. Mm -hmm. They're going to use that to track his progress, make sure he's doing OK while he's Very out cool. there. They need to start like some social media accounts so people can just log on and see where he is. See where is that? Yeah. He's getting the antenna. He's like, hey, babe, look, cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> high tech turtle. Right? Isn't that awesome? Okay. Oh. That's Sheldon. And you can follow Sheldon by going onto our website at turtlehospital.org, O R G. And you can follow Sheldon's journey in the ocean. How fun is that? He's pretty much hanging around in the deeper water here, Delta Shoals around the Florida Keys, right here off a of marathon. I don't blame him, it's a great place to be. And I'm sure he's finding some nice lady turtles out there. And you can follow the Turtle Hospital on social media. We have Instagram and Facebook. I do Facebook Lives a couple times a week so you can keep track of our patients. I wanna thank you for your time this evening and thank you for letting me introduce you to the wonderful world of sea turtles. Uh, we did have a question that came in before I uh, realized that I could ask you questions while you were uh, doing the tour. Okay. Um, back when you were uh, talking about the tumor removals, they wanted to know what causes those tumors? That's a good question. And we have scientists studying that from all angles, from genomics and studying from the viral side. We're involved in studies as well. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a paper that came out of University of Florida um, that we were part of, and it showed that these tumors have the same genetic vulnerabilities as human cancer. So that has affected the way we treat the tumors. But it's only found in and around developed islands, Nicole, which pretty much tells us all we need to know. There is a paper that came out of University of Hawaii back in 2014 that showed an increased prevalence of this disease related to the runoff from pineapple plantations in Hawaii and the increased nitrogens in water. So it is a lot to do with the runoff. It's a virus similar to herpes and stress, they think makes these tumors grow. And of course they live in the water. So water quality is a big one. Awesome. Okay. So we got that one answered. And then um, when we're talking about, you know, the sea turtles, the ones that cannot be released, um, you know, you, you said you use them for educational purposes and people wanted to know, um, you know, if they can't be released, um, do they ever leave your facility or do they stay at your facility? Um, that's a good question. I've actually flown them on FedEx, <laughs> flown with them. Uh, we have turtles in San Diego, out in Las Vegas, in Toledo, in Chicago. Um, we have turtles in Weymouth, UK. Um, so when we can, we will adopt these turtles out to facilities that can give them a good forever home because that gives us room to rehabilitate new patients, which sadly, Nicole, there's always a lot of them coming in. Yeah, I mean, it just started sea turtle nesting season and look at all the turtles you have. You said 51, right? 
We have 51 turtles yeah. right now in our care. That's, that's a lot, you know? Um, but it seems like a lot of them are the bigger ones that have had either injuries or illnesses. Um, it's, you don't, you don't seem to have as many little hatchlings cause they haven't started yet. Um, do you guys right. have new nests, um, any sea turtles nesting at the moment? Has anybody recorded or seen any? Not, not in the keys. I know other parts of Florida. I know the leatherbacks, they're the first to start nesting and they've recorded leatherbacks nesting already. Um, we usually don't see our first loggerhead nest till about mid April. Okay. And, um, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you've got your seven species and then we know that there's five that show up, you know, here in Florida, but, you know, some of them are not as known as others. Uh, and, and a lot of them definitely don't nest on our beaches, but do you see a lot of the Hawksbills in your, um, in your hospital and the, um, the Kemp's Ridley's? Um, we, the Kemp's Ridley's we see a lot of uh, primarily the ones that are transferred from New England. So we get large numbers of those and our staff really enjoys working with them because it's something different. Um, the little post hatching that I showed you, that was one that came in the Keys. I can tell you in my 10 years here, I've only seen about four come in from the Keys of the Kemp's Ridley's. And we, we two years ago had an Olive Ridley, which was very rare for Florida, um, come in to rehabilitate at the Turtle Hospital. It was entangled in a 60 pound fishing net and it may have drifted from across the ocean um, it's hard to say. Those turtles aren't normally found in and around Florida. No, definitely not. Um, and another question that I had was um, when you are taking in the hatchlings, what is it that they eat? Because they're so teeny tiny. Are they eating that lettuce or <laughs> what are you feeding these things? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, mostly the, most of the hatchlings we see are loggerheads. Okay. And we feed them little um, tips of squid. And we also have a, a diet. It's made by Missouri. And it's a gel diet that we actually mix up and give to them kind of like an infant formula, I would say. And it has all their nutrition in it. So we give those little cubes of gel a very special diet to our little ones and make sure they're getting all the nutrition they need to develop. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. They they definitely don't have the odds <laughs> that we think that they do. I mean, you, like you said, about 120 eggs are laid. And out of that, like how many survive? You're not, you know, you're, you're not looking at good survival rates sometimes because they have to first emerge. You know, they got to get through the sand. Right. And then they got to crawl across the sand where they can be predated by birds and foxes and raccoons. And then they get in the water and then... They get uh, eaten by, you know, other fish. I, I know that people who sport fish, they'll cut up in the bellies of um, mahi-mahis and they'll be sea turtles. turtles. Yeah. Everything uh, eats baby sea turtles. <laughs> yep. Everything does uh, because they like to hide in that sargasm seagrass when they're babies. And so it, it's a big area of feeding for a lot of uh, pelagic fish. It and is so one, it, one, one thing that's worth mentioning, you're talking about hatchlings and survival rates. Um, the last three summers have been the hottest on record for Florida. And we see a lot of sea turtle nesting and the numbers are increasing with the populations as far as the number of nests and number of eggs laid. But the gender of sea turtles depends on the temperature of the sand during incubation. So girls are hot and boys are cool. So the hot summers breed mostly females. And the researchers that are studying hatchlings and our eggs are only finding female sea turtles. So the past three years, they've not found any males, which is pretty scary to think about. Um, Australia also has a similar situation. They published a paper that they're seeing 99% females. Wow. So climate change is certainly affecting sea turtles. Definitely. So then we talked about the hatchlings and what they eat. So your your um, older sea turtles and the resident sea turtles, you're feeding them, you know, the lettuce. But what else is in their diet that you're feeding them? Um, they're getting vitamins. Um, and I mean, the greens are basically getting a turtle chow, which is like pellets, like you would feed your animals at home, but it's made for sea turtles. And they're getting, you know, supplemented with greens. They get romaine lettuce green peppers and cucumbers. <laughs> so that's the green diet here at the Turtle Hospital. The patients also get a mixed diet of seafood because that helps to get weight on them. A lot of them come in emaciated 
Um, and if you think about it in the wild, when they're eating the seagrass, they're probably getting small crustaceans that are living in the seagrass and getting proteins that way. Okay. And we were talking before we went live, um, sometimes you can throw a lobster in and let the, the loggerheads try and chase it and, and, and eat, eat a lobster, right? Yes. Um, we do release turtles that have three good flippers. So if they have a trap line entanglement or a shark attack and are missing a flipper, we will give them live food to make sure they can chase that prey and, and actually, you know, survive out in the wild eating live food. Okay, and this is a very random question, but um, we saw that uh, you guys have rescued baby leatherback sea turtles. Have you ever had a stranding or a res uh, a an animal need to be rescued, but it was an adult leatherback? Can you guys rescue that size of an animal? What What's uh, the story there? Yeah, we can. Um, they're hard. They don't do well in captivity. Their skin is very sensitive. Um, I personally, a few years back, responded to an entanglement and I was able to go into the water and disentangle the animal. It did not have any damage that would make it have to come in. So that is the best case. I was able to get the trap line off the turtle and just release it there at sea and not have to bring it in. Um, before my time here, the turtle hospital did get a large leather back in. And at the time they didn't have those 30,000 gallon pools and Interestingly enough, it came to the facility that I was at at the Dolphin Research Center. So we have worked with an adult leatherback there. Um, sadly, it was so sick that it did not make it. The water around the Keys is very shallow and leatherback sea turtles are deep ocean dwelling animals. So if they come in this shallow, it's either to nest or they're very sick. Okay. Yep, they're the big dinosaurs of the ocean, right? <laughs> yes, and they are the largest sea turtle species. They can get up to 2,000 pounds, which is like the size of a small Volkswagen car, <laughs> which is hard to believe. But I know the one that I went in to help rescue was easily over 600 pounds, and its flipper length was as long as I was tall, So, <laughs> as I am tall. So it's pretty intimidating. Yes, definitely. Um, I think that's it for questions. Um, if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and type that in the comments section. Um, and I will try and ask them before we end the call here. But uh, who, are, who are we looking at right now? What turtle is this? Um, this is Spook. And Spook came in around Halloween. <laughs> it was a green sea turtle with fiber papillomatosis. Um, had a heavy tumor load and is now tumor free. So we're looking at Spook. Once they're tumor free, we keep them for a couple months to make sure they are through with the virus and do not regrow tumors. It seems to be similar to chicken pox in that once we remove all the tumors um, and the virus is less active, we have not gotten any turtles back with tumors that we have treated. So I think part of that is because we keep them for a few months and make sure that they don't regrow. Uh, they want to know, is Leonardo still in the house? Leonardo is still in the house. Um, just recently had eye surgery. I took Leonardo to a veterinary ophthalmologist, Dr. Kropinski, last Friday and had an eye tumor removed. Um, we are really hoping that Leonardo is releasable. Um, what happens sometimes, these tumors internalize. When they internalize, we have no treatment and they're humanely euthanized. So Leonardo has been tumor free twice and continues to regrow. Um, so this last eye surgery is kind of hoping that it will be the last surgery for Leonardo, but stay tuned. Thanks for asking about Leonardo. And sorry, one more question came in. They were curious, um, you know, during hurricanes, uh, what are the sea turtles doing? Are you getting a lot of strandings after hurricanes? Hurricanes, anyone in Florida is familiar with them and you know, odd things happen. Um, Fortunately for sea turtles, unlike us on land, they live in the sea, so they kind of ride it out. But what we have seen, hurricanes happen during nesting season. We've had little hatchlings end up in the oddest places, inside people's homes, inside people's sailboats that have been swamped with water. Um, so mostly what we see are sea turtles where they're not supposed to be after a hurricane. Interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, 
That'd be weird to see a sea turtle in your house. <laughs> yeah, somebody sent me a video and it was a, the turtle had washed in, you know, as the water was rising and then it washed out when the water receded. So <laughs> it's some crazy stuff. And we did have a rescue of somebody that had a sea turtle in their sailboat after oh Hurricane Irma. <laughs> um, and someone's asking, is there info about uh, sick turtles? available on your website. I think you yes, said we have good educational materials on our website. Awesome. So guys, um, just to let you know, we are trying to plan right now a trip down to the Keys to do some diving as like a weekend getaway. And we're going to try and see if we can get the uh, in-person tour of the Sea Turtle Hospital down in Marathon. So Stay tuned for the release of that trip, and maybe you can come and meet these sea turtles in person. All right. Awesome. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, this raffle that um, you guys registered for. Well, um, it is Sea Turtle Month here at 4C, and that's why we kicked off with the Turtle Hospital presentation. And so if you are looking at our website, uh, you can see these are all of our events. And we have a paint night that's going to be a, a turtle um, paint night. And then we also have a um, whole landing page that talks about how to support sea turtles. Um, some great information with our partners um, up here in the uh, Boca Raton area with Gumbo Limbo. Uh, they have a great video about um, hatchlings and what you can do to help hatchlings. Also, uh, we do sell the four ocean bracelets. So if you buy those bracelets, that helps pull trash out of the waterways here in South Florida. And basically um, that helps sea turtles because they sometimes ingest the plastics and other things that are in the water. Um, and also, what is it like to dive with sea turtles? Great video, watch that. And our sea turtle ecology course. Um, what a great course. If you guys are looking to get some more certifications under your belt, this is, um, a, a online course paired with a either Zoom call or in-person classroom. And then if you want, we can take you out and take you for a couple of dives where maybe we can see some sea turtles when we're diving. Because like we said, it is nesting season in Florida. And so that's when you have those big uh, mamas that are coming in at night to um, lay their uh, eggs on the, on the beach. And then during the day, they rest out on the reefs and so we sometimes can see up to like 20 loggerheads like sleeping and we can just drift dive right over the top of them and, and, and get a, you know, a good, um, you know, sea turtle experience without having to, you know, hurt them or ride them because that's all a big no-no. We do not touch sea turtles. They are protected like uh, they said in the presentation earlier. So we want to make sure that we are doing, um, you know, backing away and just observing them while we're doing our dives. So this class teaches you a lot about sea turtles, but also about how to dive around sea turtles. And also what 4 likes to do, we like to give back. So if you spend $100 or more on our online store during the month of March, we donate $10 of that back to sea turtle research. So look at all these cool sea turtle themed items. Take a look at them, buy them, and support sea turtles, guys. All right, so random name picker. I'm giving away one digital kit for that SSI sea turtle ecology course. So here are the names. Let's go ahead and see who our winner is. Da -da 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 Victoria, Victoria Crane, you are our winner. I will be emailing you to ask or to give you information on how to sign up for that. But Victoria, give us a woohoo on the chat. Let us know you're excited and you get to learn more about sea turtles. All right, guys. So if you know 4C, make sure you grab your gear and you go diving. Thank you, Betty, for a fantastic presentation and a tour of that hospital down in Marathon. And we hope that all the sea turtles are getting healthy and can be released soon. So thank you again. Thank you so much, Nicole, and I hope everybody just has a totally awesome evening. All right. Thank you. See you later, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.